impacts of grazing by two breeds of cattle, the Raramuri Criollo and Brangus cows here at the College Ranch in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Uh, challenges that Criollo producers have is marketing their offspring. Uh, we know that Criollo animals are typically smaller than our commercial beef breeds, and so when you try to sell those smaller calves, let's say into the, the feedlot, you're usually docked in the sale yard because of the smaller size of the animal, uh, which means it's less profitable for the rancher. But we, we also know that the Criollo exhibit very unique behaviors, um, such like being able to change their uh, daily grazing amounts and stochasticity. They travel further from water. Um, they're sort of better equipped to um, diversify what they're eating across the landscape. And all that translates into um, a more sustainable uh, ecological animal, especially in these harsh southwest landscapes. Uh, that being said, we're hoping to uh, attain hybrid vigor when we crossbreed a, a beef breed animal onto the Criollo cow. So essentially, we're getting larger calves that fit the sort of traditional uh, market system through the calves at the same time as being able to stock more animals uh, and, and have a lighter environmental footprint. So as woody plant encroachment here, it's mesquite and snakeweed uh, takes over, it's displacing all of our grasses, and as that happens, uh, you have fewer and fewer forage resources to feed your uh, typical herds, and so if we can displace some of those animals with this more uh, rustic uh, criollo, uh, essentially the thought is that we'll be able to uh, raise the same amount of animals despite having a different sort of ecological state. Basically, the benefits of um, all these different breeds are, have their particular niches. So the Brangus, for instance, were originally developed in the southeastern United States, and they function very well there where there's a lot of grass, um, they can get to larger sizes, and they're actually able to dissipate heat. So as a, as a um, heat-adapted breed, essentially the Brangus is 3 8 Brahmin and 5 8 Angus. So what they did was um, take an Indicus-based uh, subspecies and make this composite animal. So the Indicus, which has... Um, you know, the really droopy skin, lots of sweat glands, uh, uh, the hump on its back is very characteristic, sort of like a camel, it, it helps with uh, water retention rates, because uh, there's a fat deposition s store there. Uh, all those things mean that the Indicus animals are very heat tolerant. At the same time, when you crossbreed that to a Angus, you've increased your marbling score, and sort of all the, all the things that go along with the demand for particular beef. Criollo, um, even though they don't fit that sort of typical beef animal uh, prototype, they, in the sense that they're smaller and have a very different uh, physiology, um, are able to do all these beneficial grazing things, especially in the harsh arid environment. And so here we have some uh, Criollo cows with uh, Brangus crossbred calves. And these are going to be eventually weaned and move on to a second part of the project. They'll go up to uh, the New Mexico State University Research Center at Clayton, New Mexico. And uh, there we'll track the calves as they grow on wheat pasture and then in, in a feedlot setting too, where they'll be compared also against um, Brangus purebred animals and Angus purebred animals to see what the, what the difference is in weight gain.